I think we're on. Hi, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, early Shabbat Shalom. We are so happy to be coming to you from inside our kitchen here in Dallas, Texas, to have an opportunity to come together virtually with our community and prepare for Shabbat and get ready for this shift that we so appreciate. Um, I have learned that it takes some time for people to plug in once you go live. Now, once I know that I'm Mindy's <laughs> on, we're rocking and rolling. So there she is. So I want to take a deep breath or two, and I invite you to join me as I look over and say, you all, y'all from Dallas, right? It is four o'clock central time on a Friday which means now the sun's going to set a lot earlier than it was. And we are going to enter into Shabbos, promise of promises. Huh. You know, you can just kind of get through anything if you know that that time period, that, um, that sacred opportunity is on the way. And we're really just a couple of hours, not even. Yeah, of course, it's, um, we're, we're moving towards December 21st, where it will be the, um, the I guess, uh, shortest day of the year. The solstice? Yes, and then we work our way from there all the way to the summer. So we're not too far away from, from summer. There you go. Five o'clock here, and I'm ready, Mindy says. Cool. Well, we're a little blah. I don't know if you're a little blah. We're a little blah. Well, wait, I forgot. Um, why am I blah again? <laughs> so this thing had started to happen. And I know as human beings, we all crave this. We all crave normalcy. Right. We all crave sameness. I, and I, you know, as someone who teaches the practice of mindfulness, I know that the mind's favorite thing is repeat, repeat, repeat. Even if it's not a good situation, the mind would rather repeat, repeat than for us to go out there and do brand new things. And so I, th I think, I, I don't want to speak for you. You tell me how this goes, but I know for me, I'd begun to get in a COVID pattern, a quarantine pattern that had just a pinch more freedom, you know, and in that pinch more of freedom or false security, you know, I could consider, you know, maybe having my hair cut or um, eating out on a patio or, you know, all different things for different folks. So don't take me at the small stuff, just, you know, big picture wise, right? And then to our dismay and, and managing expectations, knowing that it was probably going to go this way. But some of us eternal optimists said, no, it won't. It's going to be okay, you know. Um, but the numbers are dismal. And it's definitely feels a lot to me like the first time we came on back in March. Feels like there's just more, as there should be, right? Lives are at stake. More fear. Uh, uh, more anxiety for our frontline healthcare workers. Uh, Debbie, I know how you feel. And... Of course, I'm, I'm... But you're smiling so big yeah, right I, now. I just can't help it. Because <laughs> at the beginning, and back in March, we knew nothing. Right. I talked about being in the dark. Do you wear a mask? Oh, I'm sorry. The governor shut everything down. Right. Governors across the country were shutting places down. We didn't know what to do. And we, we had to learn how to figure out how to get uh, toilet paper and paper towels. It was like craziness. And I believe right now we know so much more. We still know so little, but at least we have a clue about how much, how little we do know, right? And with that being said, that some there have been some tests and they're eating closer, and there may be an outside chance that this may be a short-term 
uh, um, thing to wear a mask and be more careful and take things inside the house again. And honestly, there are days that wasn't so bad to be able to be with you. Silver linings. Silver linings. Silver linings for sure. So Thanksgiving is approaching. Um, on a personal note, hi, Stephanie. On a personal note, my birthday's approaching. So, you know. A week ago or so, we're thinking, and you know what? We could do something with pickleball. We could get party favors, right? Kind of beginning to just kind of inch out of this. <laughs> Huge plans. <laughs> and they certainly weren't plans like you might be creating or crafting prior to quarantine, prior to COVID. But there was a little pinch of getting used to where we were. And I'm not certain if my mind is more uh, or if I'm more shaky about losing that kind of solid ground feel or if it's or if it's just everything. But it's definitely a time, at, at least for us, it's a time to regroup once more. And so being this Jewish person, I have two things that I'm thinking about today. And I know Barry, of course, is thinking about uh, the Torah portion for the week. And so this is this is my input for where we are. Mishnah Sanhedrin uh, 4 verse 5. It was for this reason that man was first created as one person, Adam, to teach you that anyone who destroys a life is considered by scripture to have destroyed an entire world. And anyone who saves a life, it is as if he has saved an entire world. And I knew I grew up in a house that had like a plaque, you know, that had this, um, not the negative part, but certainly um, he who saves a life or one who saves a life. It is though that person has saved an entire world. I just cannot help but think of our healthcare workers who are doing this day in and day out. And so I'm back to my own personal responsibility. What can I do to assist in the saving of lives? You know, what, what can I eliminate or what can I, how can I add to the solution as opposed to the problem? So I'm, I'm thinking through things like this. So that's that's one piece that I'm hanging on to. And the other piece is, you know, I, I go back to the Torah because regardless of the time period or any of that, it remains as relevant as as anything, even more relevant, regardless of, you know, the stories. You know, it's it's all the same human condition in our relationship with God and one another and I'm, I was trying to think of which person in the Hebrew Bible had it super easy all the time. Well, that's easy. It would be, just a second, it's, let, me, let me start to do it this way. It's not Abraham, it's not Isaac, it's not Jacob, it's not, Joseph had a few moments of goodness, but he it was like coupled with some horrible beginnings of his life. And, um, and when you keep going, I think David had King a tough David. time. Wow, Saul's out to get him. Saul had Saul was troubled. Uh, Debbie, I don't know if any of them did. Now that you mention it, except maybe um, maybe Devora. She went to battle, you know. She went to battle, but after the battle, she won. Went back home. Said, "I want to just be a judge. Hang on underneath the tree. Underneath the tree. <laughs> sure. Well, okay. so here we are, and." whatever we're working through or figuring out with quarantine, you know, and all of those things. And uh, we're in good company. We've seen Jewish people confronted with plagues before, certainly. And so, you know, maybe we dig deep and we hope to make it to the finish line with as many of us healthy and safe as possible, including each other. That would be wonderful. But it will come with a price this year, and the price might be those Thanksgivings that we're used to, and they certainly were, you know, the Rosh Hashanah that was a little different, and the Yom Kippur, but we did it, didn't we? We did it. So I guess as I was getting ready to um, make my way to you and to be with Barry and in relationship with God, thinking it's going to be okay. We're going to take a few of those nice long walks. And then you know what? 
my to-do list is going to get put away in about an hour and a half. And the hall is going to go in the oven and we're going to turn on our services and go to our Zoom Oneg Shabbat where I can wear my sweatshirt. And maybe the Wi-Fi will continue to work. Yeah. It and might. basically it's all about Wi-Fi these days, right? Yes. So I hope it does do well. I think uh, it, it's going to be um, challenging. We're fortunate because we have each other. And when um, I do think about the people that have, do not have anyone, and it may be lonely, and it must be so doggone Very difficult. Very hard. Oh, so hard. And so, but I do remember taking our walks and during the beginning of COVID, and um, we ran into people on the street, and we got to visit with them. And it could have been just one. There's a lady down the right down the street from us, and we would find time to visit with her a few minutes. And I don't even know her name, but she's so kind, and we mm -hmm. just try to be always watering right out there right. on the right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so how is your um, your list? I know you have your birthday coming up. Yep. I guess that's changed. Well, you know what Eli says. What? Everybody's going to have a COVID birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, even okay. us celebrators, even us people who love to be super social, we're all going to. And you know what? If that's the worst, that's the worst, right? Yes. Let yes. us all come through it in good health. Right. Fortunately for us, we do have our health and we're careful and and we have incredibly strong community supporting us and and. And we try to do good work for them. We try to, um, um, and you mentioned, of course, Takuna Alam, but also there's there's always Sadaka. And it's, remember the word Sadaka doesn't necessarily mean uh, charity. Well, this week it was the diaper drive. We were we were doing right. diapers. Um, there was all kinds of things. Federation got together, some of the women uh, on Zoom. That was a fun thing yesterday. Yeah. You know, there's some creative, fun ways that we can give and stay relevant within our community and all of those things. There's our friend, Deb. Hey, Deb. Do you want to see the holly yet, or do you want to do your... Well, I tell you what, I don't know if you even know what's going on this week. Um, do you like adventures? Yes. Well, this is just a, this is a story about an adventure. And this week's tour portion is uh, Kaye Sarah. And it's named Sarah, but it basically should be called Isaac Gets a Wife, or the story of Eleazar getting a, uh, a wife for Isaac. So, in a, a quick summary, um, uh, Sarah dies, Abraham has to find a plot, and he charges Eleazar, his servant, to go find a wife for Sarah. and For Isaac. For Isaac, and not... not in his own land, but go go back to his original land in Canaan. From his kin. And from his kin and come back, find that person, bring him back to home. Because this is, remember, Lakaka, that Abraham lives where he was told to live by God. Right. And then they uh, he finds someone, comes back home, and they live happily thereafter. And then, of course, at the end of that, Abraham find, gets remarried, gets a, um, and before he does, he he gives the uh, his all of his wealth to his sons, to his son Isaac, and Isaac, uh, Abraham dies, and then uh, the two, he Isaac and his brother bury him. Well, they what was Isaac's wife's name? Let's use let some women in there okay. too. Okay, so now let me talk about Rebecca. So. He, Eliezer goes and finds someone. He says, I need someone that's going to water my camels. Uh, well, give me some water and help out. Be, show chesed, kindness. And lo and behold, he gets to the watering hole. And who shows up? Rebecca. And Rebecca offers him water, offers him uh, to, to uh, uh, feed his camels. Water the camels. Then mm -hmm. later on, um, she he's excited. He gives him some gives her some jewelry, and then he she go and then then ask who are you, and she takes him to Laban's house, her her brother's house, who isn't such a great guy, and it appears like things are really good. And they uh, and Rebecca says, I I will go with with Eleazar back home and meet the, this uh, this man. Well, what really happens is. He, she's in Laban's house. And so through what what we're taught is that Rebecca is shows kindness to others. 
in the midst of this whole household that no one is kind. They're like the anti-kind people. And he, she is so full of chesed. Eliezer has to change the stories back and forth, repeating the stories about why he's even there. It's kind of, it's kind of confusing. It's like, choose your own adventure. But when the whole point of the story, even though it has to do with Eliezer looking for a wife for Isaac, it's really about Rebecca. Mm-hmm. And Rebecca shows her overwhelming caring for others. And maybe that is the link between this week's tour portion and what you started with, talking about the caregivers. In the midst of complete chaos, our caregivers are always there, showing kindness to others, saving lives. And I think that's really the segue between this week's tour portion and where we are today in the COVID world. Joshua Koa, very lovely. Thank you. One of my favorite things in this is that when Rebecca comes with with Eleazar, um, Isaac is kind of walking in the field, kind of aimlessly, and it's it's a hard thing to describe. But the Hebrew word for that is lesuach, and lesuach is translated as like he was meditating in the fields, and and I love that. Because a lot of times, I'm just tossing this out, people will say, you know, do Jewish people meditate? Mm-hmm. From Lesuach. That's where that comes from. And I couldn't help but build upon what you were talking about because I love that. That's what he was doing when they came uh, on their camels to uh, to greet him. So At Abraham's house. Yeah, or where Isaac was. Sarah's tent, yeah. yeah. Sarah's tent. Mm-hmm. It's a great story, and it's, it's what's cool about this story. At the very at the beginning of reading it, you think, "Well, it doesn't have this incredible, you know, the earth isn't destroyed, and the world isn't destroyed, and uh, you don't have to build uh, an ark, and all these huge moments uh, mm-hmm. previous." But this one is like it's lovely because it really teaches us a lot, and it really shares. It kind of helps us learn what matters in life. So I like that. I like that too, and I love that. It highlights and spotlights Rebecca's kindness of, yes, you know, you're thirsty after your journey and I'll bring you a drink and I'll water your camels as well. And that gives Eleazar the assurance that he needs that this is the right woman for Isaac, that in fact he's done what his um, employer at that point, Abraham, has asked him to do, which is go, go fetch a wife from his kin. So good thing. Wow. Um, I love this. We have Ron Romaner. He still has a few uh, chalot for sale. Shabbat Shalom. So did y'all hear that? Ron Romaner is just a, a, a mile over yeah. off of St. Michael's, and he has um, uh, some chalot if you haven't gotten yours yet this week. Do you uh, have one? Evening. I'm trying to think a second. Ron, I got, I'd love to help you, but I can't because i got to ask my wife, is there a challah in, in our future? Oops. Okay, here's a story. Sometimes, sometimes I forget sometimes, to ask. Them. Sometimes it's really huge by now, but today is one of those days. I can't wait to see days. this. This is gonna be monstrous. I just it's know not, it. it hasn't I had the time it. yet. No, feel, oh. it needs a little. Oh, <laughs> it just hasn't had time. It's getting there. It's getting. It needs about forty-five minutes. Running late again today. <laughs> I know. I better check. Forty-five minutes. Uh-huh. Running late again. But the reason why I'm running late. Why are you running late, Debbie? Well, what the heck's going on? Well, here? it I mean, leads us into it leads us into next week's segment. We have a guest next week. Who is it? And it's been a while since we've had a guest, and our guest is going to be outside with us. Quite so our guests, uh, plural. Oh, there's two guests. There's two guests. They're gonna be outside with us. And we're very excited to have them. Um, we have a couple of topics of conversation, but the reason why I was late getting home to do my hala is because I was playing pickleball. It's an extremely important thing to do, particularly in this time, you know. Um, and so, so just for fun, not in a league or something. It was the last game of the season in the league. Okay. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Completed a whole season. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Learned a sport. Definitely. Even better. So, springboard. 
Our guests next week are Linda and David, right? Yep. Na- the Narenbergs. And it so happens I play a lot of pickleball with Linda Narenberg. So happens she's probably my pickleball mentor. But that ain't all. And I don't want to give a spoiler alert. And I don't want to um, give the whole thing away at all. But I feel like you all are going to find the two of them really, really interesting. And really interesting pup. A really interesting couple with all kinds of interesting Jewish stories. And we're actually going to talk about, you know, and I've had several people say, will you please get on there and talk about how many Jewish people have been gathering to play pickleball together wherever they can find a way um, to, to just have a way to gather and see each other as perhaps we might have seen each other somewhere else or all this planning, but it's socially distant, you know, game that, uh, that many of us can play. So I'm really excited to have Linda talk to you about that. That's kind of just a fun one. And David is just coming along. Does he have any knowledge? David has some very interesting things to say. And for those of you who, who know Linda well, and there's a lot of us, and you're going to say, oh, she probably said you, but I want you to know I had to talk her into it. She was not that excited to jump in front of a camera, and she's, in fact, a little bit shy about it. So please jump on with us next Friday at 4 o'clock and show her the love, because she says she's definitely out of her comfort zone. Um, but there's too much good stuff that this couple has to offer, right. and um, it's going to be a wonderful Shabbos show with Linda and David Nirenberg this cool. next week. How cool. It'd be, I can't wait to see Linda Sue. It's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> They're a little busy this weekend. Oh, really? What are they doing? They may, may or may not be a, a mitzvah, the temple. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And I think Linda Sue's birthday is coming up also. It's also coming up. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, Debbie. Well, Barry. Else? Well, I think we'll take our little walk and set up our laptop for services and find our candles and put that roast in the oven. And here she is. She's checking in now. Linda, just so you know, I've told them that you and David are coming on next week. We've told them all about it. Everyone is so excited. And you can't get out of it. (laughs) (laughs) We just love being here with y'all. It's it's a silver lining of silver linings. And um, every time we see someone's name, Deb, Mindy, Linda, Ron, talking about his halas, his kalot that he has left, you know, for Shabbat this week. It is the most warming, wonderful thing. And we're lucky to have you. Thank you all for tuning in and sharing this time before the sun sets with us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Debbie. Shabbat Shalom. Are you going to say, there she goes? There she goes. Show some kindness, everybody, this week.